Welcome. Welcome to Grace 360 Church. It's good to be together on a hot, warm, toasty day in Central Florida. Yeah, it's nice music. Oh, <laughs> I was enjoying it. <laughs> I just couldn't hear myself. So, but, yeah, but uh, it's great to be together, everyone. And also to have a place to worship and a place to be together that's air conditioned. Hey, yeah, I'm not complaining. Um, and of course, please uh, hang out afterwards for some fellowship. There's, I think, coffee in the back. We, you know, we'll turn the AC down even further so we can enjoy the coffee. Yeah, but I'm sure there's some cold stuff back there too. Didn't you say there's some little bit of cold things? You know, yeah, something called ice cream, you know, something like that. I don't know, but hey, whatever. You know, you guys can hang out or not. That's okay. Yeah, <laughs> but anyway, it's good to be here together. And by way of announcements, we have uh, our ladies bless study. Uh, bless is based off of uh, this book written by Dave and John Ferguson, their brothers. And it's uh, just helping guide uh, our thoughts and ideas as to how uh, God has blessed us to be able to bless others, and that through our lives we can see our neighbors come to know Christ as, a, as their Savior uh, through the, the, what the work that God's done in our own hearts. And, and uh, so um, Karen's been leading the ladies through this study, and Sandra's been host at, at her house. Thanks so much, Sandra, for opening up your home. And uh, we believe next Tuesday, or this Tuesday, will be the final Okay, so not this one, but the next will be the final one. So, uh, ladies, uh, there's still just a little bit of time left. There's one more book. I'm not trying to sell it, but it's only five bucks, right? This one book, only five bucks. It's subsidized by the church, so thank you. And, um, and so please take one home, ladies. I know you all already have one. So, guys, guys, gentlemen, uh, if you might be interested in the blessed book and the blessed study, and continue growing. Isn't that our intent? Uh, to not just, hey, go to church and be satisfied with what we get, but also, also to learn throughout the week and, and be proactive in growth in our lives uh, and, and maturity. That's what we pursue, to be more like Him. Um, so please, please continue to make that effort of growth. Also, this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. is prayer meeting. We started that back up in August, and we had a great time this last Wednesday at Marie's house, and she's opened up her home for next week as well, and probably the next uh, following weeks. Uh, she has some travels, so we'll, we'll, we'll uh, juggle different places and locations, but for now, it's at Marie's. Thank you, Marie, for opening up your home, and she always has something to eat, too. I just, by the way, just you know, I know we can connect by Zoom, but, you know, she always brings something, right? And if you guys want to bring something as well to contribute, I'm sure Marie would be uh, tickled pink, right? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, what were those things called? Yeah, they're it's the coolest thing I've ever eaten. Like, you push, you, you, you kind of, yeah, it was kind of like that. You grab on this, this tube, and then you keep pushing up with your finger. It's like a big, huge lipstick thing, and but... <laughs> Instead, you eat it, right? But it was it was good. I really enjoyed that, and um, yeah, and we prayed too while we were at it. <clears throat> but uh, but really, uh, prayer is central to our lives and central to this church, and so it, it's a key time of of coming and doing it together. Uh, just by information, Trish and I are able to go to a, a pastors' network meeting. We hadn't been for three or four months because of our travels and, and just some like uh, 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 changes in our lives as we moved and whatnot. But we made it this Saturday and had a great time, G a great group of uh, uh, pastors and wives that are Spanish speakers, the Hispanic, um, East Central, Baptist, Hispanic Network, I think. I think it's called. Uh, but anyway, um, a good time of fellowship. Again, praying for one another. And this is this is important for us to know. Uh, Central, our sister church, actually some might call her a daughter church. I mean, uh, if you go reach back into history. But uh, Central is uh, has laid their hands uh, symbolically on a couple. Um to lead a church plant of uh, through Central 
in Sanford. There are about uh, 20,000 Spanish speakers in the Sanford area. Did you know that? And 20, uh, was it 100,000 uh, as you go a bit further out? So they're like, yeah, I, I th we think we should uh, really invest some time and energy into that uh, if uh, such a large percentage of our population here speaks Spanish. So that is really neat to hear and to, to be able to find ways of partnering with them, encouraging them as, as, as we trust the Lord together to be a blessing here in Sanford. Um, and let's go to the Lord in prayer and uh, commit our time to him. Father, it's a privilege to be able to worship you, to not just get to know you through like uh, studies, and uh, word studies of the Bible and, and, uh, and in, uh, going deep in that way, but also, Lord, through worship. I thank you that we can worship you and, and, and pronounce how wonderful you are. And do that out loud. Do it in song and praise in, in, with melody. And I thank you for Robert, who's leading us and leading his team uh, as, as we praise you together. We love you, Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I got the red lights now going. Well, hello, everybody. So guess what? A year ago, what happened here? Karen and I were up here and we talked about ESL as we were just beginning the journey and gone to any training or anything. We were here just to sow the seed and water the seed a bit. And... Um, let me just retrace that journey a bit because uh, I'm probably the world's worst candidate to teach ESL for two reasons. One, everybody always laughs at me for mispronouncing every word in the English dictionary. So if I can't speak it, how can I teach it? You know what I'm saying? They say, what? Does it sound like you? <laughs> the other one is as I was raised in a very adventuresome uh, type of lifestyle. Lived on a sailboat for five years when I was a kid. I, I, my 11th grade in high school was in Key West. My 12th grade in high school was in Kodiak, Alaska. And my first job out of high school was a crew member on a Shell Oil. Now, there's a reason for this story. Listen. I was a crew member on a Shell Oil exploration boat. And we were the first boat to reach Nome, Alaska that year, January 8, 1962. And we had been caught in the Arctic ice mac for two days in the Bering Sea. So the reason I'm telling you that story, when it's 115, uh, you know, heat index outside, I thought you might enjoy hearing about being caught in the ice pack, okay? <laughs> I got a lot of stories. My point being, not only could I pronounce, could not pronounce English correctly, that I was thought, Teaching English would be about as exciting as watching paint dry and grass grow. That was not for me. Thank you very much. Give me some adventure. But you know, um, a number, several years ago, four or five years ago, the Lord began nudging me about teaching ESL. What? Huh? Who? But I eventually... Now, you can do a lot of things on your own without telling anybody. Obviously, I told nobody about that nudging of the Lord. But what I did do is go to the internet and sign up for the Florida Literacy uh, class, took the online course to teach ESL, to teach English. And I just finished that and went and did an interview with the lady up in uh, Daytona Beach. And she was ready to assign me my first student to practice, to begin teaching English. When, guess what happened? COVID. And uh, so that was that. Woo! <laughs> um, but, you know, COVID came and went, and then the Lord began nudging me again. I said, what, huh, who, when, what? Um, and uh, that's when uh, I, I remember it like it was yesterday that I went to bed Saturday night, put the covers up, lights out, but my brain began racing to the extent I could not anyway, Jose, stay in bed. And I got up, went to the computer, turned it on, and I typed in, can you teach ESL using the Bible? And there was like a hundred websites. 
I was so excited. The next day, I saw Tag Mike and said, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and uh, then got a hold of Karen. And uh, it, was, it was crazy, the adventure. So you know when you open up a GPS, like GPS Maps, GPS Google, whatever, there's layers. You can have layers. We've had all sorts, like you can put a layer of typography, or you can put the layer of restaurants or gas stations. So there's all sorts of layers that you can have on it. There's been so many layers to this thing. One of the layers has been this, what Karen is teaching right now, the Bless book. That's a layer that's been come on that bless to get up there every morning and say, Lord, well, how can I, how can I be a blessing to somebody? Every morning, that's like in my brain. Well, teaching ESL is part of the process, as well as 10,000 other things that we can do to bless others. And so we went to training. Karen and I did the training in Jacksonville. And we met, the training was good, mind you. But we met something that somebody was special, and that was the teacher, our teacher there was Sue. And she teaches at Aloma Baptist. She's the director of Aloma Baptist ESL ministry. So after the training was over, we came alongside her and said, you know, uh, can we just tag along and see how you do it? She said, oh, she opened the door wide, and we began training. It's like the camel putting its nose in the tent. You know, pretty soon the camel's in the tent. We, we were in the tent, Karen and I. And they were so gracious, open up. And so we've been teaching there, and then pretty soon Karen's got her home class, and I'm helping. And uh, then we started... Uh, Zoom classes, and um, you know, on face to face, sort of the idea is evangelism. We're teaching English, but the idea is to have evangelism, present the gospel. But we found, uh, came to the conclusion, maybe uh, online was a little bit more difficult. I'm not saying it's impossible, but a little bit more difficult. So, with Trish and Mike and Karen and I, we sat down and evaluated. We said we would love to do the online course for people who are called by God to be missionaries somewhere else. So they might be in uh, Mexico and they want to go to who knows where, you know, Thailand. But they have to learn English. How are you going to communicate otherwise in this modern world? And so we don't have to be worried about evangelization for those students. We just need to teach them how to teach English and you know, speak English. And so I, one of the things I really ask you to pray for us is that we, the Lord, would direct us to those type of people. Students called by God to be missionaries somewhere else and they need English as, a, as a, one of their tools in their tool, tool bag. The other thing is that um, the first year went marvelous, but at the end of it, you reevaluate. It was like, maybe is there some way to turn the dowel up just a bit on the ability to give the gospel, uh, present the gospel or biblical or spiritual concepts in the basis of our teaching. Now, we have marvelous uh, devotionals and prayer and all that stuff, but uh, can, can we do any more? So that we're looking at that, you know, it's always a work in progress. So maybe you can help us by praying that we would be maybe a tad bit more evangelistic than what we've been. So it's just been a marvelous journey. And guess what the whole reason for Mike having me up here today is that ESL is starting again after the summer break. <laughs> Tomorrow night. Yes, so uh, and Zoom, Karen, right? She's gonna be front and say, Oh, by the way, talking about Karen. Wowsy. So we just came two weeks ago or a week ago, whatever it was. We were in Lake Yale, the conference center there in Leesburg. And the three of us, Karen, myself, and Sue, gave a class on this caller valve that we've taken many, many lessons on. And they, everybody said it was the best class in the whole, the whole of the conference. Three days of conference, it was number one. And Karen, in her teaching, was that she was made for that. That was her sweet spot. It was absolute. Of course, it wore out, but hey. <laughs> but it was marvelous to see her in action. So. I'm just saying that no matter how old we are, that if the Lord begins nudging you, I mean, wait, I'm talking about myself. <laughs> if the Lord begins nudging you, then don't turn a deaf ear, you know? I'm just saying, you know, the Lord might be opening. 
Ecclesiastes 11.1 1 says, Cast your bread upon the waters, and after many days it will return. And you don't know how the Lord will lose anything in your life that you think, I'm not, a, I'm not the candidate for that. Pass me by. I'm not the candidate. Well, you never know how the Lord might use your abilities or lack thereof to uh, be, be a blessing. Bless my neighbors today. Bless somebody today. Bless somebody today through me. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, Wendell. Let me pray for Wendell, Karen, uh, Sue, uh, our ministry partner from Aloma. And Betty. And Betty, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, of course, the list goes on. There's all kinds of different people, a part of this team that the Lord's using and uh, in different various ways. Father, thank you so much for just the team that you've put together. And Lord, I, I, I really... Uh, appreciate the way Wendell framed it, that ESL, English, teaching English as a second language, especially to those who are migrating to the U.S. or already live here, have been here for many years, but uh, lack some level of functionality, that, uh, that you've, you've gifted us with speech. Uh, we, we can speak English. And and therefore, you can use our mouths, our, our intelligence as instruments to bless. Lord, uh, it's, when, it's when you put your witnesses in contact with those who are not your followers is where, is where the rubber meets the road in those relationships. They get to, they get to meet you uh, and see what a follower of Jesus looks like and the blessing that that is. Lord, thank you so much that uh, you've chosen Grace 360 out of so many just really, really big churches from the area, you've chosen Grace 360 and our group here to be a blessing. And thank you so much. Strengthen our team uh, and, and provide the wisdom that we need and the energy for each, each, each step of this uh, ESL ministry. We love you and we pray that you'll bring more people to you in Christ's name. Amen. <clears throat> wow, what a challenge. Thank you. Very much, Wendell. As as God has gifted each one of us um, in various and sundry ways, it uh, He gives us the ability to bless others. Uh, the question is: Is what are we going to do with that blessing? We've been going through Ephesians, right? And it's easy to come away with the thinking that, uh, well, I don't have this, or I don't have that, or I'm I'm too much this, or I'm too much that. I'm, uh, I'm too young. I'm too old. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I ache too much. You know? I have too many doctor appointments. Whatever it could be, uh, we see that we have all of these different challenges in our lives, and and yet God has has blessed us with everything that you and I need for spiritual life and godliness. All the spiritual blessings that you can even you can't even imagine, God has blessed you with those. Okay, so maybe we might lack in some material things. You know, maybe maybe I could use another twenty bucks in my pocket, or maybe my my I could get, upgrade my vehicle or my computer. You know, we always need something. Right? There's always going to be something material that we need: a bigger house or uh, whatever, whatever it may be. Uh, oh yeah, bigger church. <laughs> uh, we need stuff, right? But but this goes beyond the the visible and the tangible. It goes it goes into the spiritual realm where it, everything that you and I need, spiritually speaking, we have been in the past tense blessed with as a past uh, act, and it has a present uh, impact, and it and it carries on into the future. Those are the Greek tenses that are used when he talks about these blessings that you and I have. And that, that's what gets us excited. It gets us ex uh, wake up, waking up in the morning and, and ready to tackle the ne next task that we have, whatever that may be. Uh, we know that we have the Lord Jesus Christ and all of our spiritual blessings to work with. And we, so we've, we've seen that Ephesians is, is to sit in that. We're seated in the heavenlies. We rest in these blessings that we have. And then we put them into practice where we walk in newness of life. We walk according to the blessing that we have. We bless others. 
uh, we make, uh, we, God or the Holy Spirit makes this practical uh, in partnership with us uh, through the relationships that he's given us. And then if you've been doing that and you've been doing this, then you're going to do the next thing really well. And that is to stand, stand firm, therefore, in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> that will, will be studied in Ephesians chapter 6. By the way, we're going to get through this in 2023. We are going to get through this by God's grace. Uh, we are on session 41, by the way. So, hey, uh, pat on the back to yourselves. You, you've made it this far. 41, 41 sessions in Ephesians. Not bad. Not bad at all. And, and you're hanging in there, I trust, because uh, you keep coming back. So it must be something that is interesting and that the Lord is teaching you. Uh, so last week, we covered Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, just verse 21. Uh, previously, before verse 21, the context was being filled with the Holy Spirit uh, uh, versus being drunk with wine. Uh, the, the result of the filling of the Holy Spirit is it, 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 uh, it erupts in psalms and, and singing hymns and spiritual songs, making melody to the Lord in our hearts and giving thanks for everything. So, so there's this spontaneity when being filled with the Holy Spirit. You kind of know when someone's filled with the Holy Spirit or not. <laughs> By the way, they act and react to the different situations. If someone comes grumbling about the how stinking hot it is in Florida, you know, and this and that, and yeah, they're probably not necessarily at that moment in time filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm not saying that we can't make observations, but but we tend to be complaining and looking at all the different uh, negative things in life, and it's just it's just all falling down and go, going to pieces, right? Uh, whereas if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you can actually see through the eyes of the Spirit, which is potential. You see beyond the the, the superficial, the limitations that we have. Just like Wendell was talking about, uh, hey, uh, no matter what our age is or energy levels, God can still bless uh, us and use us as a blessing. So those that is what we call an, uh, the, a walk of faith, uh, being filled with the Spirit and be able to see beyond the, the, our limitations. So our last week we talked about uh, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. And we talked about the relationships and some of the dynamics to that. But out of reverence for Christ is why we submit to one another. Not, 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 because, not because, okay, so we all are part of a local church, right? And, and so uh, there are situations uh, where a strong leader might have a cultish following. There are many environments like that where there's a strong uh, leadership, uh, iron fist, and 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 very controlling and and cultish followings, um, and so uh, the clarity to bring clarity here, we're a part of a fellowship, not out of reverence of a particular individual, right, or the particular um, uh, gifts or skills of a team or a, a particular. Or what, because Grace 360's logo is really cool, or because we happen to meet on Sunday afternoon. You know, we, we worship together, we submit to one another and live in community together out of reverence for Christ, right? It's because of the Lord Jesus, who he is, what he's done in your life and my life that gives us that recipe to submitting to one another. Uh, especially when we don't want to, you know, when, when that, that uh, little old, I used to call him the Argentine, that little, little old Argentine inside me, you know, uh, the old man, you know, the Adam in me raises up and, and really wants to uh, uh, react and, and have his way. Uh, um, it's because of Christ and out of reverence for him that I count myself dead. I count myself dead unto sin and alive into Christ, and, and through my submission to him, I can submit to one another. And I can find joy in walking in community with you and you with me. As a result, um, we, can, we can do this. We can, we can, we can impact Sanford. Uh, in fact, I, I, I would suggest that this church has huge impact. We don't talk about them throughout the, the services that we have on Sundays, but uh, 
um, if you heard all the things, if you put, if all of us started telling stories about each of how God is using us at an individual level, I think we would be blown away by what God is doing through our little, our little, our little fellowship. You know, we're having international, intercultural impact, not just uh, regionally, but all throughout the world. All throughout the world, guys. This is really cool, uh, especially when we read the stories of what's happening. Uh, through Kate, is it, uh, uh, Katie Moore in, in, in Mexico or, or Dr. Emmanuel in India, you know, as we, as we partner with them, uh, you see that, that the Lord is working mightily in our lives and through our lives. But we do this out of reverence for Christ. And it comes out of our walk of, of submission to the Holy Spirit. Let's go to our verse for today. So we're in Ephesians chapter 5, and we're going we're gonna to break the next section down into two verses, verses 22 and 24. And as is our custom, I'm going to ask that you read it out loud together with me. Let me lead you in this reading. Ephesians 5, 22 to 24. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Oh, all right, ladies, before you get, get up in hand and like, oh boy, where's the pastor going to go with this one? You know, is he going to have fun with it or is he going to really, really rake, you know, you know, bring on the, the, the whole submission thing? Okay, so... Let's go, before we do that, <laughs> let's go into our story, our story from the Word of God. Let's go to the next slide, Betty. So our story today is of a someone who is considered a very beautiful woman. Do I have a picture up there? I don't know if that's what she looked like, but I found a picture. And whoever you are, thank you for loaning your face uh, today. Uh, but this story is of Sarah known as Sarai, uh, and, and is found in Genesis chapter 11, at chapter 11 and 12. So Sarai, her name means princess. Okay, isn't that befitting? If her name was princess, my guess is she was also the daughter of a very important man uh, in, in, his, in his realm, a man that's respected. His name was Terah. Okay, and Terah, uh, he was a wealthy uh, Chaldean tribesman, and uh, um, and he he had several children. <clears throat> now this this uh, uh, this princess uh, was Terah's daughter, okay? and she marries her half brother Abram. Okay, so Terah was also the father of Abram. Terah is the father of Sarai. And back in those days, just so you guys don't think, oh, that's incest. I can't believe, you know, that, that the brother would marry a sister. And why does the Bible uh, make, you know, say that that's okay? Genetics in that time frame was very, very different than the way it is today. Well, the, our version of humanity don't get mad at me. Don't throw, you know, tomatoes at me right now. But our version of humanity today is very, very far, far from the original creation of God, of Adam and Eve, and those immediate descendants and lineage uh, that came also through Noah. These guys were, I'm not going to say they're superhuman, but they, they, God made Adam and Eve perfect, okay? <laughs> and, and genetically, uh, Adam and Eve and their children were able to intermarry um, and that's how humanity was able to uh, multiply and reproduce uh, it's just that af as the years go by inbreeding has continually uh, affected people so it's not a good idea I'm not okay today for a brother to marry a sister okay um, the likelihood of uh, DNA um, uh, having some accidents if you will is very high and so she marries her half brother Abram, and she's she's unusually attractive, uh, especially at her age. Uh, how do we know this? Because uh, later on she goes down to Egypt, and 
she's 65 years old. Okay, she's 65 years old when she goes down to Egypt, and her husband is completely scared of all the Egyptians, specifically the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh that, that's like the head haunt. That'd be like okay, Biden, <laughs> our version of, of the president of the United States, the Pharaoh of the land of Egypt, uh, had a whole harem of women. Uh, of his wives, and Abram was fearful that he would be killed because uh, he found, he would find this woman so attractive among all the women's uh, women of Egypt. Wow. Okay, so we're talking about a very striking woman who apparently had uh, this this youthful youthful uh, uh, look to her, even at the age of sixty five. Hey, ladies, I don't know what she did, but. Uh, but uh, you know, maybe maybe not that far from Adam, uh, women were like that. I don't know. So Abram is he's you know he, he's afraid of what might uh, men might do, and as they as they see her and desire her, and he has his strategies. We'll talk about that later. But but she's this beautiful Bedouin upper class woman, upper class woman, uh, who had no idea that by marrying Abram, her story would be woven into God's narrative of redemption of mankind. She had no clue how far God was going to uh, 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 use her in the light of the redemption of all of mankind through the people of Israel, through the Messiah. Wow, the Messiah is going to be a descendant of this lady. Uh, she had no, no clue at the time, but uh, she, she leaves her family to follow Abram uh, and, and her wealth and her position to follow this crazy man uh, to this 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 land that 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 this invisible God would show <laughs> would show him. Um, I don't. I, some of you lady here ladies here have been married. Some have not. Um, but if you had a husband that said, "I don't, honey, I talk, I I, I talk to this voice." Um, I didn't, did you see him, honey? No, I didn't see him, but I heard his voice. Well, what did he say? Well, he, he said, take up your family and, and move to a land that I'm going to show you. So where are we going? Well, I don't know. Uh, we're just supposed to pack up and move. What would, what would you do if Robert told you that? Probably like... Are you nuts, right? You, you know, I'm, you would do that in a very loving way, but but are you nuts? You know, uh, are you crazy? So so here's this guy who talks, and it's it's in this uh, idolatrous in context where uh, on their shelf they had several gods: the god of the mountains, the god of the fields, the god of the the the, the plants, and and the god of certain animals that. Um, uh, that they would worship and pray to and, and, and that were in charge of bringing blessing, right? And so they had all these gods and, and all of a sudden this invisible God talks to, to the husband and says, go to a land that I will show you and I'll bless you. Uh, ladies, put yourself in her shoes. This is not an easy, this is not an easy task, but she willingly obeys. She, she submits to the process, and, and she discovers in, uh, throughout this, uh, this marriage early on that she's barren. So uh, her sister-in-law, Milka, uh, who, by, by the way, her sister-in-law is also her niece, okay? Uh, so they're a very tight family. Uh, her brother, Heron's daughter. Uh, and, and Milka has eight babies or more. That we know of, and she she feels profound shame for her lack of fertility as a woman. This is tough, tough stuff for that time frame. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Although Noah, so th let me give you some context of the, the what's going on in the background. Noah Noah walks with Yahweh, and and is is walks. He he also heard the voice of God, and and had a wife that that. <laughs> accompanied him and built, builds this ark, and he's got these three sons that helped him and partnered with him in that, and they built this ark. They found out that it was a good thing they did. It was a really good thing they did because God preserved mankind through them. And, uh, but um, much, like, much like the children of Adam and Eve, 
his Noah's children drift away from Yahweh as well. Uh, Noah probably tried telling them the stories and had his experiences with Yahweh, but in the process, some of the grandkids didn't make it to the reunion, and so they didn't hear the story. And then some of their their kids didn't make it to the to the family reunion, and all of a sudden, uh, kids were popping up everywhere in this time frame, and and. Uh, these women are having, you know, uh, 10, 20 babies, etc. Uh, that's what God said, be fruitful and multiply. And, and so these families were expanding and becoming more and more distant from Noah and accessing uh, God's word, right? Because uh, Noah would have been the guy to pass on God's word to the people, to his children and descendants. So, but what's interesting here, if you look at the timeline, and I'm not going to go into detail there, but if you kind of get a glimpse of there, you see that people like Abram's dad, Terah, actually were contemporaries with Noah. If Terah wanted to, he could have looked Noah up, and maybe he did, and talked with him. Noah, what was it like? What was the voice of God like? My son, my son just told me that he talked to Yahweh. And to go to to go to um, a, a land that he's going to show show him is this real? He might he could have talked to Noah and ask him what that was like, and may, or maybe even one of Noah's son like Shem, uh, because they were still contemporaries. There's there, I don't know the the distance geographically from each other, but they were contemporaries. And, and yet, and yet, the the whole generation seemed to be corrupted and fall, fall fallen away from God, distance themselves from God in, in very short period of time. So, uh, so these people they abandoned God. They made images that they called gods and they worshipped Him. Let's go to the next slide. And the and so this this in this context, this invisible God Yahweh speaks to Abram, and it was in Ur. The reason why, the writer of Genesis doesn't make it clear, but the reason why we believe that Abram was spoken to by Yahweh in Ur is because of Acts chapter 7, verse 2 and 3, where Stephen is recounting the story. And, and so uh, he's told while he's in Ur to leave his father and family. Leave your dad, he said. Leave your dad. Leave your father, who's, who's Terah, right? And all the, all the wealth and the riches and all the 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 the, the social life that that implies, uh, and God promised him land, descendants, blessing, all, all through all the nations will be blessed through him. These these promises had massive implications for Abram, and there was a tough decision, and so God was going to establish uh, he, a group of people, an ethnic group that would become His own kingdomizers on earth people who would establish his kingdom on earth. Uh, we know them today as the Israelite nation, Israel. Um, so, but Abram, Abram does not react right away. He hesitates. Um, just parentheses on this, my little story here, parentheses. Uh, when does Abram, now known as Abraham, when receiving God's word, react right away? And acts right away, gets up early in the morning and takes off. It was when God told him to sacrifice his son Isaac. So the Abram of this, this young Abram version of him and the older version of Abraham uh, uh, into his hundred, hundred plus years of age at that time, uh, he had matured significantly. And I trust that you and I, as we grow older, we don't just grow older in years, but we also grow more mature in our walk with God. Let's go to the next slide. Buddy. So finally, finally, this the, the old man, Tara, uh, ends up taking leadership and he moves the family. And, and, his, and a bunch of people go with him, including his grandson Lot, to a place called Haran. Uh, perhaps the, the city was named after his son that had passed away. And that's where they settled down. The, the caravan traveled for about 600 miles. If on the map you can see the red circle below, Ur, and, and the, where we believe it to be, and, and, and Heron up north, uh, about 600 miles as to they traveled. So 
Uh, six, okay, it's not quite the land of, of Canaan. If you look at the screen, you notice the green color, and you notice how it kind of takes this, this crescent. You know, that's the fertile crescent. It's, it's that uh, um, very uh, fertile area, easier to walk and travel, a lot cooler. There's water. There's hotels along the way, you know, to stop by, oases, et cetera. There's places to feed and drink your cam for the camels to drink. Um, and, but look at the other roads through the desert, not so attractive. Okay. So the natural, okay. So it's not that a Tara was, uh, off his rocker, but the natural, uh, route would have been taking that upper Northern route and then going down South more into the land of Canaan. Uh, so that, that, that helps give you a visual as to what was happening during this time. And, and but but uh, they, the problem is, is they settled down. They got comfortable in the land of, of Haran. They, they dug in roots. And it wasn't until the old man, Tara, died that they were willing to move on. And there's, there's some real interesting illustrations there as to the old man in our life dying, reckoning the old man dead and uh, dying so that we can move on into spiritual life in Christ Jesus, this new life. Sometimes, sometimes like Abraham, you and I have to recognize the old man has passed away. That, that leader in my life, that, 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 that pillar in my life who, ha who has such strong influence and say over me, he has to die. He has to pass away for me to rise up and take leadership according to my calling and the calling that God has, has put in my life according to my new creation in Christ Jesus. So the old man dies, he passes away, and, and here, 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 here the poor guy is faced with, with uh, his, his husband and wife relationship. Honey, time to move. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I've been eyeing this nice piece of real estate across, across here, and you know, maybe... Maybe we could buy that plot of land and build a new house there. It decides that there, a lot of the, the camels gather in that area, and it's, it's fun to hang out, and, and it's a beautiful place. And Abraham's like, no, no, uh, Yahweh is calling us to move, like completely out of Haran and into uh, another place. But where? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Um, We'll, we'll head we'll head west. <laughs> Go west, young man. Head west and maybe a bit south, and we'll, we'll hit the sea maybe. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out as we go. We'll have to walk by faith. It's like, by faith? Huh? Okay. And she sees her husband wrestling with this, and, and he, 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 as he's maturing, you can, she's learning to respond to that and respect him and and come to the place we don't know how many arguments they had in the process we don't know if she just quietly obeyed we don't know we don't have the scriptures that say but in the process guess who went with her husband sarah was right there by his side so ladies and men when we're talking about submission here we're, we're talking about this uh this type of model where uh, a husband and wife, uh, they grow together, they function together, they operate together on the basis of uh, principles like we hear from the Word of God. Uh, there are marriages that are outside of Christ that have other principles that they and guidelines that they use to keep them together. Some of them have to have date night. If it's not that, their marriage would fall apart. There's principles like that that without Christ that, that, that they, they cling on to. Maybe it's doing vacations together. Maybe it's building things together, doing fun things together. There's, there's, there's recreation. There's activities that, that husbands and wives do together outside of Christ that keep them together, right? Um, uh, but in Christ Jesus, we, uh, it, it's sweeter, as you know, that you can walk by faith jointly trusting Yahweh to lead and guide, and that we both have the Holy Spirit in us to be able to submit to one another and to walk together in that, and to submit to this process, even in the in the context of these unknowns. So he he takes his family, 
and Lot and begins a 300-mile journey into Canaan. And so Abram was 75 years old at the time. Let's go to the slide, next slide. And it's back to our, our, our beauty again, uh, Sarai. <clears throat> and in, in Genesis 12, verses 5 to 7, it says, when, he, when they came to the land of Canaan, Abram pressed, passed through the land to the place at Shechem, to the oak of Morah, at that time, the Canaanites were in the land. They were, they were owning that property. And the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your offspring, I will give this land. So God's giving affirmations along the way. So he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. And, and an altar is a visible sim, uh, symbolic thing that I guarantee you, Sarah, Sarah, if she didn't help move the stones to build the altar, uh, she was definitely a participant in, in, in knowing what was going on and how things were going down. Now, the story of Sarah's long. I can't continue telling it much more, but uh, this this lady, she follows her husband who, who listens to this in, invisible God. Uh, she follows Abram through through famine. They, they rush down to Egypt. She gets thrown into these awkward situations where her own husband sells her in, uh, to uh, negotiates with Pharaoh to, to join his harem. Remember, she's barren. Okay, Remember, she's barren. There's no consequences to extramarital affairs. Uh, this guy's a stinker. Abram has a lot of growth to do in his life. And she puts up with this guy through the whole process and, uh, and has a relationship with God, comes to know this Yahweh, uh, herself personally and then later on she, she the, the guy does the same thing with this king called abimelech who's a philistine king of gerar and and and, and abraham gets stinking rich through this whole situation and, and then later with hagar you know she she got some slaves through it from uh, her own servants and hagar comes from egypt and 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 uh they have that whole arrangement, and, and, and then she herself is, has this baby at 90 years old. Uh, guys, she's, she's been through a lot, this woman. And yet she, her faith grows in Yahweh. And she's named in the Hall of Fame uh, in Hebrews. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing, was enabled to bear children because she considered him, this is God, uh, faithful who had made the promise. Let's go to our verse, Betty. So, uh, wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself uh, its Savior. So just, well, let me tell you a quick story. There's this this guy who took these verses, maybe a little bit out of context. So he's kind of this easygoing, mild man, and, and he was reading a, a book on being more self-assertive, you know, get things done. And uh, he decided to start at home. And he storms into the house and then points a finger in his wife's face, right? And says, from now on, I'm the boss around here, and my word is law. Yeah, being assertive, that's that's... That's a real man there. I want you to prepare me a gourmet meal and draw my bath. Then, uh, when I've eaten and finished my bath, guess who's going to dress and comb my hair? <laughs> he looks straight into her eyes. And her response, the mortician. <laughs> All right, for those of you who didn't get it, you know, she's going to kill him, okay? <clears throat> All right. So that's what submission is not. That's not what that's not what Paul is talking about here, uh, of being assertive, taking dictatorial leadership over an autocratic leadership in, in in the husband and wife relationship. And by golly, if you don't do what I say, I'm going to turn you over. <laughs> I'm going to turn you over my knee and give you a whooping. You know, I, I'm going to I'm going to. Oh man, you know you. That's not what we're talking about here. It's not a dictatorship. It's not machismo. Machismo is, may not be as well known and understood in the U.S., but it certainly is in South America. That the idea that the woman exists to serve man and fulfill his needs, right? Every, you know, you fulfill my needs. When I have a need, yeah, 
you you need to be ready. It doesn't matter how tired you think you are. Uh, it, it's not a distinction in value that that a man is more valuable than a woman. No, it, it has nothing to do with that. Let's look real quickly at uh, at Genesis chapter one, and uh, at some of the verses that that came up in, in, in early on with when God created mankind. And God had to give Adam parameters and to help him understand who he was and, and what why in the world he created this uh, this beautiful creature called Eve uh, that was a woman. Like, man, Ad, and it given Adam some context. He had to train Adam. In fact, he had a whole bunch of animals walk in front of him first and said, give them names. And Adam saw that none of them really fit. They didn't really fit. Uh, and then when God brings Eve, it's like, oh, yeah, she fits all right. Yeah, uh, she was made for me. She was taken out of me. Um, and so God, God walked Adam through these prop, uh, uh, these, these, uh, this, this, this um, experience so he would understand and treat Eve according uh, to God's create, creation and order. He says, then, then God said, Let make, let's, let's make man in our image. Notice the plurality here. In our image, after our likeness, and have them, plural, uh, uh, exercise dominion. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and the, over the livestock and over the earth and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Let's go to the next verse, Betty. Uh, and so, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he, was, he created them, both male and female, he created them. Again, plural here. So you got a plural God making plurality, both a man and woman. And then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish and the sea, and over the birds in the heaven, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Basically, you guys are going to be... Uh, just like just like the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit cooperate together and rule together, just like we are the model, I've created you, man and woman, to work in community, in communion together, in mutual submission, just like Father, Son, Holy Spirit. One is not greater than the other. One is not more valuable than the other. They have, they have distinction in roles and responsibilities between the Godhead. Just like I made you all in my image, now you all go and act like it. Do the same. Uh, I'm setting forth the model, and now it's your turn to put this into practice. Let's go back to uh, the, 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 the set of verses from, from Ephesians. So the context of, of Ephesians is God's own model of community, of living life in submission to one another. Remember our story from last week? How Christ, the Son of God, submitted to the will of the Father in his humanity when it was not convenient for him whatsoever. Do you see the correlation with e, excuse me, um, with, uh, with Sarah? It was not convenient for her to uproot. Princess, princess had a lifestyle, guys. And she was comfortable. And she was somebody. And she had friends. And, and she... She, she uprooted. It was not convenient for her. Twice! In fact, guess what they turned into? Nomads. This is a woman who grew up in a palace. Now she's a nomad living out of tents with, the, with wafting in the breeze the smell of camels and sheep. Talk about a change. And she, she was willing to, to move past, uh, to live uh, in 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 submission to her husband who had the call of God on his life and who heard the words from the invisible God. And, and by faith, they walked together in the light of the word of God. By faith, they walked together. Um, this is called complementarianism. I, I wish I had time, guys. I, I went a little bit over time. I'm going over time. Uh, but this is called complementarianism where man and wife were created to complement one another in reflection of the triune God. Uh, <clears throat> in, Ma in 1 Corinthians 11, 2-3, Paul says it like this, Now I commend you because you remember me in everything and, and maintain the traditions even as I delivered them to you. But I want you to understand that the head of every man is Christ, the head of, of, of a woman is her husband, and the head of Christ is God. 
So all of us walking jointly together in mutual submission to one another, we're not suggesting that God the Father submits to us, but does he hear us? Absolutely. Have, can mankind influence the heart of God? Absolutely, guys. We don't exercise influence over God in, in that we're superior, but God wants to hear from us. God, God suggested to Moses, I'm gonna wipe out, I'm gonna wipe out Israel. They're, they're, they're messed up. And I'm gonna start a whole new nation through you. And Moses said, No, God, keep faithful to your word. And God repented. He changed his mind. And 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 uh, Moses had influence in God's uh, historical narrative. Wow. God calls us to pray. Not because not because it's just a thing we do, but because he wants you and I engaged in influencing the outcome of what he wants to do here on earth. And it's walking by faith and submission to him. And this is a reflection. The wife and, and the husband relationship is a reflection, an earthly reflection of the relationship of church and Christ. Uh, now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Wow. And, and so how can possibly a wife bring herself to submit to that man? Well, the only way I can think of is by faith. Because sometimes that dude is, <laughs> he's messed up. I mean, can you imagine? I know, I know Trish couldn't. Can you imagine if, if I sold my wife, Trish, to the harem of, of, of an, a, a wealthy uh, Saudi Arabian guy? I'm bringing it into modern terms here, right? But can you, you can't imagine that. What not head of a husband would do that, you know? What kind of jerk would do that? The, and yet you see Sarah walking by faith through this process in, in, in an unfathomable, uh, un, uh, un, uh, hard to understand and comprehend uh, willingness to submit to the process. It, and not understanding everything, and yet and yet trusting Yahweh through the whole thing. How much more beautiful it is than when husband and wife submit together uh, to Christ. They're filled with the Holy Spirit. They submit to Christ, and they walk in mutual submission to one another. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. Uh, these are deep subjects, Lord, and I, 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 uh, I can't do it justice, but I thank you for the stories that you have from your word of men and women who have gone before us and modeled this. Uh, there's some things that Abraham did that was really foolish, but even that's a model and in in that we know what not to do. Uh, and yet we see that your hand remains faithful in everything. Lord, I ask that you give the women here strength as they, as they uh, um, in this uh, women's liberation and uh, feminist society that we live in now, uh, that they... Um, demonstrate what it means to, to be walking in submission to Christ each each and every day, and uh, and, and sometimes to husbands that, that aren't worthy, really, just to be honest. And yet, uh, I ask Father, too, that husbands here will understand um, and realize that it's their responsibility, it's our responsibility, it's my responsibility to walk in submission first to Christ and to walk under under his authority and accountability to him first and foremost as as i lead my wife in a healthy manner and my children lord may you be honored and glorified through this little church and through the the relationships that we have in this community we pray in christ's name amen